Hello, everyone. It is another Ask Jess, my video podcast all about decluttering and organizing. I am Jess Marcy. I'm a professional organizer, clutter coach, and this is my weekly podcast where I answer all of your questions relating to decluttering, organizing, consuming less, uh, and making your home a space that you love. So today we are going to dive into recycling. What is going on with recycling? Recycling and garbage is something that comes up all the time when I work with people because one reason that we hang on to things in our homes is because we just don't know how to dispose of them. What happens when we put it in the garbage? What can be recycled? This, there's so much confusion around recycling. Where is the best place to take this thing and get it out of my house? These are really big questions, and I'm gonna try and simplify everything as much as I possibly can. I wanna start by saying, when you hurt before you purchase something, that is the time when you should consider how you are going to dispose of it. So if you are going to bring something into your life and it's going to be very difficult to get it out of your home when you are done with it, either emotionally difficult because you feel bad about throwing it out uh, or physically hard to remove from your house, then that should be a huge consideration before you even purchase it. Um, you want to make sure that when you bring something into your life, it's gonna to be totally worth it for you. So before you buy anything, you always wanna ask yourself, how am I going to get rid of this? How am I gonna properly dispose of this? So anyway, that's just where you start. So from now on, before you make a purchase, you wanna start thinking, how am I gonna get rid of this? But we have a lot of stuff in our house that we need to get rid of right now. Remember, this is always a judgment-free zone. It's really difficult to know what to do with stuff. So if you have piles of things that you're just like, oh, I, can't, I just can't get rid of these things, that's okay. You are in a judgment-free zone right now. We're going to talk through this. Um, so recycling is a very complicated topic and situation. Um, in, so let's just, we're, we're going to talk about plastics right now. Um, of all of the plastic that has ever been produced in the entire world, only 9% has ever actually been recycled. So right off the bat, when we're talking about plastic recycling, it's not very successful. I mean, 9%, if you got a 9% on any exam that you took, that you might as well get a zero, right? That's like absolute failure. So. We have not been very good at actually recycling the plastic that we have created. The systems have, do not exist for recycling, which is really quite sad. Um, the, of that 9% that has been recycled, the vast majority of it has been downcycled. Now, when you downcycle, you take a recyclable material like a water bottle and you turn it into something that cannot be recycled again. So a water bottle does not usually get turned into a water bottle again, even though that's what we tend to think. Like you put it into the system and you think when you pull it out of the system, it doesn't really change very much, but that's actually not true. So when you put it into the system, it comes out of something different. And typically we downcycle plastic. So it's almost a misnomer to even say we're recycling it. We're downcycling it. We're turning it into a synthetic fabric, like polyester. We're turning it into the plastic on the bottom of your car. We're turning it into a park bench, but we're not turning it into another plastic bottle. So just to recap, of all the plastic that has ever been produced in the world in the last 70 years, we've only been producing plastic for about 70 years, only 9% has ever been recycled, actually recycled. And of that, most of it has been downcycled, turned into a material that, or a product that cannot be recycled again. So recycling was, has not been successful. Uh, in the end of 2018, very suddenly, China, who had processed the majority of the recycling, of the plastic recycling from the rest of the world, especially from the United States and the EU. Hey, Dina. 
Okay, your, your husband should totally watch this if he is obsessed with recycling. So in the end of 2018, China suddenly announced that it was closing its doors to the majority of the plastic recycling that was coming in from around the world. So it said, we will no longer be the dumping ground for your trash. The reason that China closed its doors to the plastic recycling is because, first of all, it was creating a ton of air pollution, water pollution, ground contamination. Um, it was the plastic, there's so much plastic that was coming into the China, flooding the Chinese market that it, they, it was hard for anyone to deal with it. Um, so over the course of 2018, China basically phased out its accepting of plastic recyclables. Um, and what happened was, so recycling is totally market driven. There's only, you can only recycle if somebody wants the product, they, if they want that raw material. So China over the course of 2018, these companies in China used to pay for the raw material because they were still making some profit from turning the small amount into a recycled item. Um, so they, these companies started to go out of business. Instead of being paid for the material, we were now being charged for the material. So you'll see in a lot of towns and municipalities and garbage collection services around the United States, the pricing started to go up. Now, if the pricing in your area has not gone up yet, it's because your, your municipality or your garbage pickup service is locked into a contract, a multiple year contract. So it's your prices are staying the same, but they will jump dramatically or your recycling service will disappear for certain types of materials after that contract is up. So I know locally in the Capital District, there are certain cities that are locked into these great con recycling contracts until like 2022, right? And this all happened as a surprise in 2018. So December of 2018, China says no more plastic. So the only market, what, and again, there is a small market for plastic recycling, but even when the market was the best it's ever been, we only recycled 9% of our plastics ever. So the tiny market that existed for recycling was actually a massive market, but you know, in China, totally disappeared. So there was no place for plastic recycling to go. So the United States started shipping recycling to other developing nations. And these nations would accept the recycling and then have no infrastructure to process the recycling. So the recycling was going just in, like not even landfill, just like dumped on top of the land. It was being dumped into rivers that would go into the ocean and it was being burned, open air burned. So we basically flooded developing nations with all of this plastic. Over the course of last year of 2019, developing nations started rejecting shipments of plastic recycling. What our, so it's, even if we say we're recycling, what does that mean? Where is this going? If there's no market for the plastic recycling, what's happening to it? So. I was trying to get a lot of this information because I have clients that just don't throw out stuff, don't recycle stuff because they're not sure where it's going, what you can recycle, what you can't recycle. So in this, at the same time, my garbage pickup collection service went out of business. So they sent a letter that said we went out of business because the cost of recycling is astronomical and we have to just, we're done. So we started, you know, trying to find a new garbage pickup service. So I'm calling around. I know that China now has not taken our recycling. I'm like, where, where is it going? So I'm making all these phone calls and I finally get one person at a garbage pickup service to tell me that all of the plastic and all the glass, we'll talk about glass in a second, in my local area is being landfilled. So it's being, you're sorting it into your recycling bin. It's being picked up with the recyclables. It's going to the recycling sorting plant it is being sorted out and then it's being trucked to be landfilled. So there's two landfills that plastic recycling in the capital district are going to, as far as I know right now, one is in Syracuse and one is actually in Canada. So if your collection service times have changed, 
Um, from what I understand, we have to get those trucks over the border before five o'clock in the afternoon to get to the Canadian landfill. Um, that might be why your times or days have changed in the last year. So basically, as far as I can tell, and I have done a ton of research on this and made hundreds of phone calls, there really is no plastic recycling happening at all. And actually what's happening is we're processing our plastics at home, which creates carbon emissions, right? We're using hot water. We might run something through the dishwasher, but we're processing and takes our time. We're processing our plastic recycling at home. We're tossing it into the recycling bin. There are more trucks on the road, recycling trucks to come and pick up this stuff. It's going to the the single stream processing plant, which we'll talk about single stream in a second also, because that's apparently what totally ruined any, any good recycling that was happening. It's being sorted out and being trucked to a landfill. Now, as a caveat, landfills are not actually, that's not actually a bad solution in the United States. We have extremely good landfill management and environmental systems in landfills. So landfilling our recycling is actually better than shipping it to an unknown developing nation where they're gonna dump it into the ocean or burn it or do who knows what with it. So I'm not opposed to landfilling because um, from what I understand, it really is a very environmentally sound way to process our trash at this moment in time. Um, so that's the situation <laughs> with plastic. It is not being recycled. Um, part of the reason, one of the contributing reasons to the plastic situation is this single stream sorting system that we have developed in a lot of our cities in the United States. So basically the idea is that you can, you know, put all of your recyclable materials into one bin and then it goes to the processing plant and the processing plant sorts it out. Now they use this very technical machinery. It, ha it like blows certain materials. It uses magnets for other materials. Um, it laser scans to see what certain materials are. So it has this way, uh, and there's some really cool videos, actually, if you want to see a cool video, show your kids, find a, a video of a single stream recycling plant. It sh really shows how all the material is separated. But what happened was when we went to a single stream, stream system, Americans thought that they would just, throwing anything into that bin was the right option because maybe it's recyclable and somebody down the line will see that one piece of garbage and be like, oh, that's recyclable. Let me put this in the right spot. Wrong, 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 wrong. Commingling all that material has created a situation where we cannot separate the plastics into the pure materials that they need to be. So on the bottom of every plastic container is a number. The number indicates what type of plastic it is. So in order for the plastic recyclers to really be able to use it, they need 99% pure material in that, like, collection of materials, right? So it's like all crushed and shredded and you know compacted together. They need it to be 99% pure when it gets to the recycling plant. Our technology today, and because we're throwing so much trash into the single stream recycling bins, makes it so that we cannot get to 99% pure, right? We can get to like 96% purity or something like that. So single stream recycling has really undermined the entire global recycling industry because we cannot get the, those pure products that we need that are actually usable for big scale recycling. So <laughs> that's the deal with plastic recycling. Now, the best thing that you can do, if we're gonna put these in order, one, two, three, the best thing you can do is to stop consuming single use plastic. Commit to no single use plastic. There is no good solution for recycling plastic or tossing out plastic right now. Commit to no more single use plastic. Go to the grocery store, use your own containers, do whatever you can to get rid of single use plastic. Make phone calls to the companies that are selling stuff in single use plastic and tell them, I, I want a better option. And when you see a little note on packaging that says, this item is recyclable, I want you to say, this is bullshit. It might be recyclable in a perfect world, but in reality, we can't recycle it right now. My mother, I'm getting, I know, I get, I get very worked up about this. My mother got a note from her town this year in January that talked about how much recycling 
they had done last year as a town. It was like, look at us. We recycled so much stuff. I'm like, they didn't recycle anything. There is no, you can't recycle stuff right now, plastics, right? So they collected it, they brought it to the processing plant, and then they patted themselves on the back. But what happens after the processing plant? That is the question. So, and I think, you know, a lot of people just don't know. Politicians, you know, general, just people don't know what's happening with recycling. So everyone thinks, yeah, we're doing this great thing. We're collecting all of this recycling. Talk to somebody who works at the plant, like I have. Talk to them. All they're doing is sorting it out and they're sending it to a landfill. So we're not really recycling. It's just like this big, giant, like mythical, it's like a unicorn, right? Like plastic recycling is like a unicorn. It doesn't exist right now. So the best thing you can do is stop buying single-use plastics. Number two, if you do purchase single-use plastics, toss it into the garbage because right now, tossing your plastic, I know this is like sacrilegious, right? Like nobody tells you this. I'm telling you this. Throw your single-use plastic into the garbage because right now, it creates more carbon emissions to process it multiple times and send it to the landfill anyway. All right, so I see we have a question. How are you buying food that's in plastic containers like cottage cheese? Okay, I'm going to get to that, Dina, but <laughs> I, I've like seriously changed the way that I buy food and what we eat. Um, we've gone pretty extreme in this household. We've come kind of back and forth, but I'll get to that question in a second. That's a good question. Okay, so number one, don't buy single-use plastic containers. Number two, if you do, let yourself throw them into the garbage. That's where they should go right now. And number three, the last option would be the recycling bin, but again, you're just really throwing it into the garbage. I encourage you to tell everyone that you know about this. Um, when I started talking about this a year ago, people like really did not believe me, and there, were, there was not a lot of resources that I could direct them to. But now, after a year, there's tons of news about this from very reliable, this is not fake news, from very reliable news sources. Um, so it's very easy to find, to validate the information that I am sharing with you. I still find that people don't want to tell you to throw your plastic into the garbage. They want to tell you that it's not being recycled, but it's hard to say the words, throw your plastic into the garbage. So say it with me, throw your plastic into the garbage. Okay. So Dina, the question is, how are you buying food that's in plastic containers, like cottage cheese, for example? So basically, when I realized that all of this was happening, I thought that we should try and do like an extreme experiment in our home and see how little single-use containers we could possibly consume. Um, I knew I had to get the kids on board, so I had them watch these documentaries about the plastic situation. Now, plastic is a very visual environmental problem. So it's pretty easy to show your child a documentary and have them be like, we need to make a change, right? So they, I got my kids completely on board. My husband was never fully on board, but that's okay. Um, because, you know, <laughs> different viewpoints in a family. Um, he also doesn't do the, ma the majority of the shopping or cooking. I do. So I have a lot more executive control over this. So I had my kids fully on board. And we just started very slowly trying to figure out what we could substitute for each thing. So whenever you're changing your habits, you want to start small and don't add a new layer until the first thing that you've added is actually a habit. Um, so for example, bread, we can't buy, we have a hard time finding bread in, like in, you know, unless I go to a bakery, which is not convenient for me. Um, so we started to make our own bread. It probably took like eight weeks for making bread to be part of our routine. I used the artisan bread in five minutes a day technique, which is super fast. Um, you know, you basically just have the dough in the fridge. So you like grab some and just cook it when you're ready for a loaf of bread. So that worked really well until my youngest daughter developed a, or was diagnosed finally with a gluten allergy. So then <laughs> that kind of went out the window, right? Um, so now we do buy bread again in a plastic bag. But in general, like we just stopped purchasing things in plastic. No more chips, um, you know, no more cottage cheese if it came in plastic. 
we are super, super, super fortunate to live by a co-op that has over a thousand items in bulk. So that is tremendous. That is what has enabled us to reduce our plastic as much as we can. If you don't have a co-op near you with all of that bulk, I don't, I really honestly don't know how you could possibly reduce your, your single use plastics as much as we have. Um, so we just, you know, we just bring our containers, weigh them there, fill them up, um, you know, hummus, we just started making hummus from scratch. But everything, you know, we had to figure out the right way to do it and the right recipe that worked and make it like a sustainable part of our lifestyle. And then we would add like another, we would say, okay, now, now we're tackling like whatever it is. Um, and some things worked great and other things did not. I loved making our own mayo. Nobody else in the family likes the amazing mayo <laughs> that I was making. So after like nine months of having only my homemade mayo, my husband bought <laughs> a jar of Hellman's. I'm like, you know, but okay. So that was not ultimately successful, but you, you kind of, every little change that you can make is significant and important. So even if you switch entirely to reusable water bottles, that would be tremendous. Um, New York state has also enacted a plastic bag ban that goes into effect in March. So that will be interesting to see how that kind of works out. Um, at least it'll make people think about plastics. So, okay, so plastics not being recycled. What about other materials? Metal, totally recyclable still. Metal is worth a ton of money in scrap. It is 100% recyclable. If there is one thing that you should be recycling, it is metal. Um, and I will still buy stuff in metal, like in aluminum cans, because I know that's recyclable. So I'll buy chickpeas, although I can get those in bulk too. Um, I try and get my pasta sauce in an aluminum can, which now I know like aluminum has its own health situation and some people don't like aluminum, but aluminum from a recycling standpoint is still highly recyclable. Um, it's a good material to be using if you're thinking about reuse. Um, uh, paper is another, I have no, I, nobody can tell me what's going on with paper. I can't seem to get a straight answer on paper recycling. If you're watching and you know what happens with paper recycling, let me know. I think some of the complications with paper is that a lot of times we feel like we have cardboard or paper containers, but they're actually coated in plastic or they're like a composite material and then that's not actually recyclable. So even if it says it's recyclable, not actually recyclable or not actually being recycled. Like in theory, recyclable. In practice, not recyclable. Um, so we're really talking about theory versus practice. The last category is glass. So what is happening to our glass jars and containers when we recycle them? I was very disappointed to find out that our glass is being crushed in landfills also. So the problem with glass is that it's a very heavy, aggregate material. So when you crush glass and fill up containers, it weighs many, many tons. So in order for glass to be profitably recycled, there has to be a local glass recycling industry. So you need the infrastructure locally for glass. In our case in the Capital District of New York, we don't have that industry, although occasionally crushed glass is used in uh, pavement for roads. But for the most part, the glass is crushed and landfilled. And another problem come to find out with glass is that it also is very destructive for those single stream sorting machines. So it gets like crushed up and stuck like very fine in the gears and everything. And it um, can be very, it can create problems that need to be repaired and stuff like that. So glass, as far as I can tell right now, and glass as a, as a recyclable material is valuable. It's just hard to get it places. Uh, so it, it's, would, it's less expensive for glass manufacturers to use recycled glass. It's the tra transportation that's the problem. Um, so I consider glass right now to be this pretty much the same as plastic, not recyclable going into a landfill. The only difference with glass is that if we take our empty glass containers with their lids back to our co-op, the co-op sanitizes them and puts them out for free to use in the bulk section. So that is a way that we can, it's very local to where I live. We can recycle glass, and that's at the Honest Weight Food Co-op in Albany. Um, 
So what do you do as a consumer? How do you find out this information? It's, <laughs> it's so tricky. I would actually start by, well, you can call your, call your whoever's collecting your garbage, your city, your garbage pickup uh, service, your, your municipality, whoever's collecting your garbage, call them and ask them what's happening to it. And if they say it goes to a sorting center, ask the next question, where does the sorting center sell it? Where is it being sold at market? I heard a lot of responses, it gets sold at market. What market? What's the market? Who is the buyer? Who is buying this stuff? I guarantee, and please correct me if you find out differently, nobody knows where it's going, right? Nobody knows. So try and go up the chain first of your local pickup collection service and see if you can get any real answers from them. If you can't, um, <laughs> and it might be very difficult to, I would post this question to your Facebook feed. Um, when I was researching this, a lot of the information that started to come in was from really lively discussions that were being had on my personal Facebook page. So I asked all of my local friends, who knows what's going on here? And it really came down to friends who had friends who were either in local government and had a little bit more insight, who were actually working for the recycling plant so they knew what was going on. Um, I had some reporters involved. And over the course of a couple of months, I, you know, I got the answers that I have shared with you. But it, this is not common knowledge. And it's not enough to say it's being recycled because that does not mean anything. So <laughs> that is the very lengthy discussion about recycling. The best thing that you can do for the earth moving forward is just consume less. Consume less of everything. That is how you save the earth. That is how you save your wallet. And that is how you create sanity in your own home. Consume as little as humanly possible. Challenge yourself. Take one week and do not purchase a single thing. Take one month and do not purchase a single thing. It's just like anything else. When you go to an extreme and then you come back, you never get to the same level that you were at before. It's like eating sugar. When you stop eating sugar for a month and you start eating sugar again, it literally makes you sick to eat as much sugar as you were eating before. It's the same thing with plastics and single-use containers. When you stop completely, it's, you start to realize how much plastic there is and it starts to drive you crazy and you make different buying decisions. But consuming less is the answer. The answer is less. I have a blog on my website called The Answer Is Less. I have a workshop that I do locally, though I'd be happy to do it anywhere in the country, called The Answer Is Less. The answer is less. The less that you consume, the less you bring into, into your house, the ultimately the less that will be produced. Um, your, and I know that people say individual effort makes no difference, but it absolutely does. Look at how my individual effort and just knowledge and sharing of information has sparked so many other people to make changes. There is no question that small changes can have a tremendous impact. So that is what I'm going to leave you guys with today. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. As an aside, there is a new group that I formed a couple of weeks ago called Prioritize Your Sanity. It's a private Facebook group, um, and it's designed just to share real information about decluttering, about organizing, about consumption, um, consuming less, and about creating how homes that you love and that make you really feel joyful to be in them. It's a supportive and safe space for people to share their journeys, decluttering and organizing, and to get support around these journeys because we all need a community when it comes to having a home that we love um, and dealing with all the clutter in our lives. So I would encourage you to go ahead and join it. You can search it up. It's facebook.com slash groups slash prioritize your sanity. I hope to see you guys in there. Uh, if you have any questions for future video podcasts, please go ahead and post them, ask them. My, my content is driven by what you want to hear. So let me know what you want to hear. And if this resonated with you, if it made you think, um, share it, share this information. The more people that know it, the better. So with that, 
Happy Tuesday. I'll see you next Tuesday at 1215 for another episode of Ask Jess.